May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. As I said earlier, today's Confirmation Sunday at St. James's Church. Every year, at a time that is convenient to some bishop, a visit is made to every Episcopal church to represent the larger church to conduct the service of confirmation, to offer opportunity for the reception of new members, reaffirmation of baptismal vows. It's a major celebration for the church. I have a special memory of confirmation at St. James's. This time, some 14 years ago, my wife and I had just moved back to Richmond to live. We bought a house in the fan. I was engaged in a new job on the faculty at the Medical College of Virginia. We had finally taken possession of our home on Park Avenue. The movers came and they brought the boxes and left, leaving us with those boxes to unpack all the work of recreating a home. Earlier in the year, before the move, we'd taken a trip up to Toronto, Canada. While we were there, we decided to visit an old stone Episcopal church in the center of the city. It was a cold winter Sunday. This worship service was held in a chapel. We joined with less than 20 people in a matin service. It seemed that that church had once been filled with people and was now unsure of its future. So now it was spring and we were in Richmond and I had been walking around the neighborhood looking at various things and I discovered this other gray stone church off Stewart Circles within walking distance of our home. I wasn't highly motivated to unpack those boxes in the kitchen. And so I suggested to my wife that we go visit this church I assured her that it would be like our experience in Toronto. We would get there at 9 o'clock. They would have a matin service. There'd be a few people there. We could be in and out in less than an hour and back to the kitchen. It didn't take much to convince her she was ready to go to. We arrived on time. We found our way into the church. My first impression of the sanctuary was just to be overwhelmed. It is so beautiful. Amazing for a large church and it was filling up fast turns out we'd shown up on confirmation Sunday at 9 o'clock there were no empty seats the main part of the church was filled the balcony was filling up the bulletin listed the names of at least 50 children most of the boys had at least three names and a suffix it was amazing the music began the service was alive there was color and drama special chairs bishop and other clergy choirs prating in it was an amazing day it took us at least an hour and a half to get to the altar for the eucharist and out the back door uh, even as a good lutheran i kept thinking as i left this church i found a home had lunch with Randy a couple of weeks later at the Jefferson Hotel, and he confirmed that interest, his warm invitation to become part of ministry here at this church, to bring my ministry to our professional background to his work. You never know where the Spirit's going to take you. For us, the Episcopal and Lutheran traditions, confirmation is a service of endings and a service of beginnings. We believe in infant baptism. We celebrate, we welcome children in our midst and to the altar rail as a community to join with parents in taking responsibility for nurturing those children in the faith. They belong to their families, they belong to us. As a result, we invest in a result, a, re, a robust Sunday school program. We, we in, develop the youth group. We send kids off to camp at Shrinemont and other places, vacation Bible school. As those children grow in years, many of them come to sing in the choirs here, take on responsibility for serving at the altar. Many of them, over time, will take on some kind of mission trip 
a special bonding experience in service. Their regular classes for confirmation, most teenagers are not interested, but they come because their parents bring them, all culminating in today's blessings. These young people will now become adult members of this church. We've honored our promise, made at baptism, to assume responsibility for their faith journey. We've given them a core foundation of their faith, They've learned from their parents and grandparents, from mentors about faith lived out, and they've been mentored in full responsibility as Christians for their own lives. A noted psychologist named James Fowler has studied developmental stages of faith, says that at this age, 11, 12, 13, we enter into a synthetic conventional stage of faith. We've accepted the belief of our families, of our community, no doubt influenced by our peers and by secular education, the words are there. The pattern is there for socialization and for integration, but it has yet to be tested. Will what they've learned and experienced stand the test of time to the challenges of life? Time will tell. Hopefully, when life presents its challenges, and it will, these conventional experiences will bring them back to the church to explore more, more deeply the meaning of their faith. Today's gospel captures a little of that experience. On this fifth Sunday of the Easter season, we find Jesus preparing to leave his time on earth. He's preparing his disciples for life without his immediate presence. Where I'm going, you cannot come. I gave you a new commandment. Love one another as I loved you. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples. On the first reading, on the surface, it seems simple. Love God, love your neighbor as you love yourself. But today's lesson is more specific. By the way you love one another, everyone will know that you are my disciple. As the disciples hear this new commandment, they're being asked to be open about their faith, to be known for their belief. It is a radical change from tradition that has been a part of their faith. To be called Christian are part of the way meant to be at risk. Soon after this passage appears, Jesus will be marked, tried, crucified. Belief will be in a risen Lord, a radical change in religious tradition of their youth, their families, their churches. The apostle Stephen will preach this faith and he will be accused of blasphemy, thrown down into a pit, piled onto with rocks as he prays for the forgiveness of those who are throwing the stones. And on the side, Saul, Paul stands holding their coats, much affected by what he witnessed. Love defines an ex, a, a discipline and a disciple. A disciple is at risk. Love for others becomes an identity to love the unlovable, the misfits, those who look and act differently, those who present a challenge to one's faith. So today, we'll invite a new group of young people committed to learning the words of our faith. Hopefully we've given them the tools for making loving decisions in their lives to find in this community the support and love of others who struggle to define what faith means to them. In a society that is constantly changing, there needs to be people of integrity 
who will risk loving one another. So today, we celebrate and we welcome new members to our community. We give thanks for their growth in grace. We reaffirm our commitment as we grow in faith and understanding, trying to understand what it means to become a disciple known by the way we love one another. Amen. Peace of God that passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.